So um, Brad asked me to talk about DR12 uh, and accelerating with teachers. And this has been mentioned before what DR12 is, but this can be corrected to this one. Essentially, it's only three crime modules and a little bit more. But um, if you put it in a bigger context, so DR12 is part or has been part of MSU's effort proposal in response to the funding opportunity announcement. It's an upgrade of DR3. Provide energies up to 12 MeV per nucleon for uranium and higher energies for lighter elements. And uh, already in the proposal, we said that DR12 should be realized well before when the effort comes into operation. I think we wrote 2000, uh, towards the end of 2015. Of course, if it's possible to expedite this, this would be very interesting. Uh, uh, first of all, to make best use of the rare isotope beams already available at the NSCL, uh, to shake down experimental equipment that is used in this energy range. And of course, to start the science earlier, this is what uh, Philomena Science uh, uh, and uh, Brett Sharon talked about. So, um, so here 12 is essentially what you see here is uh, the existing facility, gas stopping here is here, and here 12, here 3 experimental area, and there's here 12 experimental area that would be fed. So, um, here 12, what does it take to, to make here 12? Is essentially to take uh, RIA 3 that has been nicely described by, discussed by the orchestra, and uh, add three more cry modules. So that makes your RIA 12. Um, you also need is a beam transport system that takes the unit <coughs> for the experimental hall that has the size to, for the experimental equipment that you need to do the science uh, at this end. Um, just to give a little picture, you have seen it before. Uh, so this is a kind of how you have to imagine this one. This is the platform that you have now for VR3. And this platform will be extended. Uh, it was a straight line before. <laughs> well, it's a screen. I for me, it's not straight. So. Anyhow, so. <laughs> This is just to, to give you some idea how this may look like. And uh, the total system essentially was about 13 meters, or 50 meters here, and will be an additional 50 meters, 15 meters here to make layer 12 out of, out of this. And just if you remember the highway, just to put this in place, essentially there would be just enough space to just put this, this vacuum there. Um, OK, what goes onto this platform is uh, three cryo modules uh, with a beta of 0.085. Each of these higher modules has uh, eight superconducting quarter wave accelerating cavities operated at 80.5 megahertz. I think the important point to be made, make, uh, but has already been made, is this: uh, this uh, cryo modules and the uh, cavities are the same that will be used for the driver Linux. That means this is essentially uh, already uh, kind of mass production in, the, in terms of three cryo modules that uh, give us ideas how to do this and also for the driver. <coughs> In addition, there is uh, superconducting solenoids uh, for focusing that are in the cryo module. Uh, this is the operation, and the peak surface electric field, which determines the acceleration we can get with such a uh, uh, cryo module, is 30 megawatt per meter, uh, the quality factor of given here. So this is essentially from a test of result from a better uh, 0.085 prototype. Uh, the, uh, the, the quality factor is a function of the peak uh, uh, field. And this is the operating point, but we should say that already with, with other cryo modules, uh, uh, the lower beta would have shown that actually the, the, uh, this, this, uh, this could, be, could be actually less, less critical than shown here. The important point to make is also that the RIA 3 is actually operated here at 20 uh, uh, megawatt per meter, so it's really conservative now. And there's actually also some energy gain that can come <coughs> by the fact that we may be able to, to run this, uh, the, the last, uh, the, the better point of three. 85 cryo module for VR3 with this higher gradient. Uh, this is essentially shown here. So, so Oliver Kessler has shown a similar table, but restricting itself here to this area. VR12, <coughs> uh, depending on the key over A that you extract from the, the charge beta, this depends on the element, uh, the ranges between uh, uh, 0.05 and 0.5. This is the beam energies that we would get with VR12, 12, 12 between uh, 12 and 21. Um, um, MEV pinocchion, so that would be for uranium, this would be for lighter beam, where you could have reached possibly this, this beam energies. What you also see here is this kind of potential gain factor for ER3 if we could use for that beta um, 
uh, if you could use the, the, the higher feed gradients also in the Maria 3, and this also you see here, that would be the initial gain factor that is possible, uh, possibly still there from here. <coughs> um, so one point I think is interesting, the question is if one wants to go there or not, I think it depends very much on funding and how this goes ahead. Uh, this Maria 12 could be realized in an in incremental way, so one could perhaps could um, install um, one cryo module that takes you up uh, for uranium up to 60 mV per nucleon, the second one, 90 mV per nucleon, and the third one gives you the full area 12 energy at 12 mV per nucleon. And then just have a beamline system here and uh, just transport the beam with the, with the, with the uh, energy uh, that we have for the accelerated to the experimental area. So, as part of a uh, proposal that has been also submitted to the UE, there was um, kind of science has been looked at. Go into this, but so this would also allow the incremental increase of science opportunities depending for different beams. This would be area three, then there's one, two, or three cryo modules would be able to address different science that you could do depending on the beam energy that you have. And but of course, ultimately, you would like to have the system installed and approached. Um, the area 12 beam rates they will be identical to the area three beam rates. So we have the estimates, you can look them up here, and this is a plot was already shown. Again, one should be careful with these rates. There's a lot of assumptions going into this in terms of the efficiencies to get out the gas stopping, efficiency for the charge breeding, and efficiency for the acceleration. And also has to be multiplied and all the uncertainties, of course, uh, uh, grow by just, just <coughs> And ultimately, I think one has to see this year 12 is, of course, uh, foreseen also for effort. The FM beam rates, one can look at it here. So if somebody here wants to dream what kind of experiments he wants to do after the year 12 has been uh, installed at uh, MSCL before FM comes to operation, but to, to what he's think about in the future, he can look up at the beam rates here. Um, experimental area. So this is kind of the layout that we have we've seen, we've seen a couple of times, particularly this one here um, uh, for year 3. For year 12, you see again here the three prime modules, and then uh, this was what, it, what happened in the uh, uh, our proposal for effort. Uh, we actually the beam array here for tertiary panopion uh, that would have about, in this case, about 8,000 square feet. In principle, it could be extended uh, to have a total of 30,000 400 square feet at some point. At the moment, we are rather concentrating on what we do up here. And um, this was what we proposed, but of course, at the moment, we are looking at different layouts, how effort could look like, and also as part of uh, this exercise is we look at the different layouts for the experimental facilities. That's on only one of them, and if it makes sense or not, we have to discuss this. Uh, that's another option, for example, the advantage would be here, that would be an IV, but could easily make a, uh, a high bay crane, could have different walls, so that could be shielded, there's a truck access to get big equipment in. So these are the considerations that are presently happening in terms of understanding what is the best uh, layout for an experimental area for ER-12 and uh, to incorporate into the, the new baseline that we have to essentially make as part of the conceptual design for, uh, uh, for, for CD2. And uh, yeah, I think at the end, but I think the important point is that, that uh, already now I think even this phase, I think user input and ideas on uh, which is how this area should look like and what, what would be good to, to, to maximize the science that could be done with VR at uh, VR 12. Uh, would be, of course, very valuable. And, uh, and also sizes of experimental equipment, what is shown here just as a placeholder, is just the size of a cartoon or how possibly this lab would look like, but there could be other instruments. And it would be good to know, uh, already quite early, and it's not so critical, but quite early to know what kind of experimental sizes have to be accommodated in different worlds, and what is the space needed, and what is the infrastructure. OK, so this, I think, concludes what uh, uh, we are 12 this. There's still some time, time, time to go, but I think uh, I don't know what Conrad what time you gave yesterday in your talk in the session, but was it 2013 or 14? We are 12, maybe, maybe uh, <coughs> uh, possible, but um, uh, so in a few years from now, I think we, we could have something in place that we use it for science. Uh,